So I'm sure you guys all know Crystal Ball. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new, by the way. But as you guys know, Crystal Ball is the host of The Hills Rising. But she's actually one of my favorites when it comes to being a, you know, I know she's not an official campaign surrogate in the way that Nina or AOC is or whatever. But listen, uh, she's really a pseudo surrogate, okay? I believe she just can't endorse someone because of her contract with The Hill. Otherwise, it's obvious who she's supportive of, and she's the Bernie girl. And so, she's going to go on here, she's going to give her analysis. But the most important bit is going to come in at the end. Let's check this out. It was an utter and complete disaster, and I'm sure that he realized halfway through he should have just stayed home. He was doing better just buying paid media rather than having to actually respond to attacks. I mean, look, what is the pitch that Mike Bloomberg is making? He's making the electability pitch. Look, I am the guy, whether you love me or not, whether you like all my positions or not, I am the guy who can defeat Donald Trump. And last night on that stage, he looked like absolutely anything but that. And that is the major issue for him. And you have to think, look, I heard, John, you were pointing this out earlier. Bernie Sanders came into last night the front runner, the only candidate who really could even rival him in terms of ultimately winning the nomination seemed to be Michael Bloomberg. And that took a massive, massive hit last night. Um, a lot of folks have already voted in Nevada, but I would certainly expect her to improve, especially with that white college educated voter. And that gets to your question. Look, she and Pete and Amy primarily have been competing for that sort of white affluent liberal vote, which has been the vote that has shifted around the most, right? They were with Pete and then they were with Amy and now I would bet they would give Elizabeth Warren a look. That's enough to give you a bump in the polls. It is not enough ultimately to get you the nomination. I think that's the issue for her. Bernie Sanders has largely consolidated the progressive lane. So look, I think if you're her campaign, she thinks Amy had a moment, she was able to get the comeback narrative. If Warren can grab a second in Nevada, and then hang on as best she can in South Carolina, head into Super Tuesday where California has been a relatively decent state for her, then maybe she can make a case. But I want to point out, maybe the most important answer of the night was when all of the candidates got asked what they would do if there was one candidate who had a plurality, but not a majority of the delegates going to the convention. And every single candidate, including Elizabeth Warren and except for Bernie Sanders, said that they would let the convention rules play out, meaning that they want the superdelegates to try to get involved on their behalf. And if we come down to a contested convention where Bernie Sanders gets a plurality of the delegates but not a majority, that means things could get very, very ugly. So that is the most crucial portion of this segment, uh, as well as the most crucial part of the debate in which it was that last uh, it wasn't the last minute but it was close to the end where basically all of them and chris matthews put it perfectly chris matthews from msnbc he was like that right there proves that all of the other candidates on stage do not believe they can get the most delegates out of all of the candidates on stage and so that means that they've already given up winning and so they have to basically go through the process to steal the nomination from Ber from bernie saunders and so she, I don't think you can under, really understand or comprehend the significance of Crystal going on CNN and saying this because millions of people get to hear that and see that and understand what's going on. But the fact that superdelegates could jump in to override, because if you don't know how it works now, superdelegates are no longer on the first ballot, they're only on the second ballot, which means if the threshold number of delegates is not reached, you go into a second round, you have a contested convention, and at that point, you know, delegates can do whatever they want, is my understanding. Um, and then superdelegates jump in. And so there's like 600 plus superdelegates. So those superdelegates are not in favor of Bernie Saunders. You know, he may have a couple more than last time around, but it ain't enough to be, you know, he's still, I'm sure, getting demolished in that superdelegate count. So, you know, it, it's really remarkable. And I'm going to have to do another story about this, a separate story. But... Literally, NBC News, for some reason, they cut out that portion from their YouTube upload of the debate. They just straight up cut out that entire portion of uh, all the candidates saying they don't support democracy. And, I, you know, I have to say that when you spent like four years, three years now, basically whining about the Electoral College, 
saying how you should abolish how the electoral college should be abolished and you talk about the popular vote and how Hillary won the popular vote and that's why the EC should be abolished. And then you don't even support the popular vote in your own party, let alone popular delegate count. At that point, it's not even popular vote anymore. It's popular delegate. It's the most delegates, not even the most votes, which are different things. And so, you know, this is why Republicans make fun of you, and that's why it lands. You bitch and moan about the EC, and oh, we need to abolish it, and oh, we need popular vote. And then in your own party, you literally have a system where you rig elections against candidates you don't want to win, the establishment, that is, doesn't want to win. You have superdelegates to override the will of the people, um, and then you don't even have an actual, you know, popular vote system. And so it's like, hold on a second. Are you actually, you know, consistent on any of these things? And same thing goes for immigration. If you go back like eight years ago, uh, they were all literally flipped. Obama and Hillary and Bill and Nancy and all these people, all Kirsten, all these people are flipped on immigration. They were all real hard on immigration back then. But very crucial piece of information that Crystal Ball brought to CNN to talk about. Very, very crucial stuff here.